Welcome to the lecture on Integrated Reporting and the Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive, the CSRD. I'm Petra Amersfoort and in this video I will talk about main institutes that develop non-financial reporting principles and standards. In addition, I will explain the core law and regulations which apply to non-financial information and the development and key principles of the CSRD. Non-financial reporting is often described as ESG reporting. It means reporting on environmental, social and governance performance. But why is it important to report on these topics? The visual on the left shows the planetary boundaries. If we want to use the planet sustainably, we have to stay within certain boundaries, the green area. However, as you can see by the orange color, we are extremely off. This has increased awareness that action is required. Many organizations are either creating new sustainable business models or modifying existing ones to integrate sustainability. The World Economic Forum claims that strong ESG performance has the potential to have a significant impact on investors, businesses and wider society. The World Economic Forum created the ESG ecosystem map, which is displayed on the right. The map creates transparency and it categorizes stakeholders into groups which have an influence on ESG reporting. In the inner circle, the groups are displayed in either blue or green. Individual stakeholder examples are displayed in the outer circle. The standard setters and framework creators, in particular the laws and regulations for ESG reporting, will be the main topics of discussion in this video. What is now the link between ESG reporting and integrated reporting? Integrated reporting brings together financial and non-financial information, such as ESG. There are currently a lot of standard setters and framework developers who create integrating reporting standards, as we could see in a previous slide. The worldwide most used standards and principles for ESG reporting are from the Global Reporting Initiative, the GRI, the International Integrated Reporting Council, the IIRC, the Value Reporting Foundation, the VRF, and the Task Force on Climate-Related Disclosures, the TCFD. These all contribute to the development of the CSRD. You probably heard of the Sustainable Development Goals. These are 17 goals developed and launched by the United Nations in 2015 to ensure a sustainable world by 2030. The SDGs deal, for instance, with poverty reduction, health, equality, climate action and clean water. More and more companies are using the SDGs as a compass for their sustainability strategy. For example, by selecting a number of goals on which they can make the most impact. The CSRD is helping these organizations to report on the achievement of their sustainability goals. Now that we have looked at the worldwide standards, let's look at the developments in Europe that the European Union is driving. The European Commission has a legislation strategy called the Green Deal that aims to make member states' economies more sustainable. The European Green Deal is a set of initiatives which aims to set the EU on a path to a green transition, with the ultimate goal of reaching climate neutrality by 2050. The European Green Deal was launched by the Commission in December 2019. The Non-Financial Reporting Directive, the NFRD, which took effect in 2018, required that public interest companies such as banks, insurance and listed companies with more than 500 employees report on their approach to issues such as environmental pollution, social responsibility, human rights and diversity. The CSRD, which was implemented in the EU Council in November 2022, is an extension of this NFRD. The CSRD changes the way in which companies have to account for their financial and sustainability performance. You can pause this video to read the goals. Under the CSRD, companies must account for their sustainability reporting in an integrated management report. The integrated management report requires limited assurance, which must be completed by an external auditor. However, another licensed body may perform this instead of a traditional auditor. 
The Integrated Management Report must show annually all material sustainability topics relating to, as a minimum, environmental, social and employee matters, diversity in the company board, respect for human rights, anti-corruption and bribery matters. This means that there needs to be a process in place in the organization to select the material topics for stakeholders, such as a stakeholder analysis. For these material topics, strategy, governance, policies, processes, systems, critical performance indicators, results and targets must be disclosed. The information shared in the report should also be forward-looking and include targets and progress. Reporting needs to be in line with the EU taxonomy regulation, which is part of the Green Deal. As you can see on the right, the CSRD and also the Sustainable Finance Disclosure Regulation, the SFDR, are both subject of this taxonomy. The EU taxonomy provides definitions for economic activities which are environmentally sustainable. Companies need to report which part of their turnover and expenditure is in line with the taxonomy. This includes topics such as climate change, raw materials, resources, water, transition to a circular economy, environmental pollution and biodiversity. Additionally, all data must be digitally tagged in order to fit into a European single access point. In the financial world, we are used to financial materiality. The CSRD extended this concept to double materiality. This means that organizations not only have to report on how sustainability issues might create financial risks for the organization, which is the financial materiality, but organizations also need to report on how their activities impact people and environment. This is the impact materiality. The double materiality is also called the inside-out or outside-in approach. The CSRD is not yet complete as reporting standards are being developed by the European Financial Reporting Advisory Group. EFRAG prescribes what and how to report. The CSRD standard builds on existing standards and frameworks for sustainability reporting. The standards are expected to contain a number of components, such as reporting principles, critical performance indicators for certain themes, and sector-specific KPIs. It is also possible to integrate other standards, such as GRI or a carbon performance ladder, as part of the CSRD report. The first 12 standards will be cross-cutting, which means they will apply across all organizations and all sustainability topics. In ESRS1, general principles, such as for instance double materiality, are described. The second standard, ESRS2, describes how companies, for instance, need to organize their governance, like processes, controls and procedures to monitor and manage sustainability matters. The next set of standards for environment, social and governance specifies what needs to be reported on specific topics such as climate change, own workforce and business conduct. It is expected that in June 2023, the first 12 standards will be finalized. As you can see, these are now still drafts. Next to these 12 standards, also sector-specific standards will be developed. The first draft of these are expected in the second quarter of 2023. The CSRD will apply to all large companies, whether listed on stock markets or not. Non-European companies with significant activity in the EU, which is a turnover of more than 150 million euro, will also have to comply. Listed SMEs will also be covered. However, they will have simpler standards for reporting than large companies. Non-listed SMEs have an option to voluntarily use the CSRD's reporting standards. However, increasing amounts of SMEs will receive requests for sustainability information from stakeholders who have to comply with the CSRD. Or SMEs will need to include this information in their business model to grow or operate future-proof. Next to these criteria, companies have to meet at least two of the three requirements, which are based on net turnover, balance sheet total and the number of employees. We have already discussed the first set of standards, 
which are scheduled for release in June 2023. The second set includes sector-specific standards, standards for SMEs, and a standard for non-European parent companies. Beginning January 1st, 2024, the first stage of the new directive will start. It will take place in four stages. As of January 2024, large public interest companies with over 500 employees must comply with the non-financial reporting directive with reports due in 2025. As of January 2025, large companies that are not currently subject to the non-financial reporting directive with more than 250 employees and or 40 million in turnover and or 20 million in total assets must submit reports in 2026. Starting January 2026, listed SMEs, except micro-undertakings, small and non-complex credit institutions and captive insurance undertakings will be required to submit reports by 2027. However, listed SMEs can opt out until 2028. Finally, as of January 2028, third country undertakings with net turnover above 150 million in the EU that have at least one subsidiary or branch in the EU must submit reports for 2029. Another development not to be missed is the Corporate Sustainability Due Diligence Directive. This directive aims to impact the behavior of company stock management. This is accomplished by linking the fulfillment of the company's sustainability targets with regards to respecting human rights and the environment in global value chains to the bonuses of top management. In other words, management will also be held accountable for their activities in their value chains so they will also need to know what their suppliers are doing in terms of ESG objectives. We hope you learned a lot from this lecture. Thank you for watching.